In this video, we'll take a look at what it takes to install the PHP SDK on Linux. I'm going to be installed on a very fresh new uh, Ubuntu installation, so we'll just see what it's going to be like to install on a clean machine. To get started, you go to developers.google.com slash app engine slash docs slash PHP slash getting started slash installing, as you can see in my browser here. This page gives you instructions on how to install the App Engine SDK for PHP on Linux, Mac OS X, and of course Windows. In this uh, version, we're going to take a look at Linux and see what, it see what it looks like and see how easy it is to install. So I'm going to get started by clicking on the Linux link, and then we'll see um, I'm taken to this page where it shows me how to install the PHP SDK on Linux. The first thing that you're going to need is Python. And this is because the local server that you'll be using for testing your App Engine uh, applications locally, it actually uses Python, even though you'll be building in PHP. So you want to make sure that you have Python, and most Linux out of the box has Python, so we'll, but we'll just take a look at, um, just to see if we have it. And the command here is slash user, slash bin, slash env, python, dash v. Once I select that, you can see it returns Python 2.7.3. So I know that I do have Python installed and I'm good to go. If you type this command and you don't have Python, then just follow the instructions on the Python website to install Python on your machine. It's very straightforward, or you can use app get to get it. So the next step is to get the PHP SDK. And there's a number of commands already done on the page here for you that will help you, how to help you to do that. So let's take a look and uh, step through these commands and see how it works. So the first of these you can see is sudo apt get install gcc lib mysql client dash dev lib xml2 dash dev. So there you go and install. Um, I'll just move this up so we can see. It's telling me how much disk space I'll need and it's going to go ahead and install them. Now once they're done, the next thing that I'm going to do is wget dash dash trust server names http colon slash slash ws2 dot php dot net slash get slash php dash five dot four dot fifteen dot tar dot bz2 slash from slash us one dot php dot net slash mirror so that's going to go ahead and download and install also so once that's done, we can uh, then go on to the next part, which is we're going to just tar that bz2. So tar xjf php-5.4.15.tar.bz2. dash .tar .bz2. So that's going to create our directory. So I can go to cd php-5.4.15. Now I'm in there. I'm going to have to configure it. So dot slash configure dash dash prefix equals string pwd slash install dear dash dash enable dash bc math dash dash with dash my sequel so then once it's done it's just a case of doing cd dash and we're back in our home directory. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to install the SDK now that we have PHP. You can see the instructions are here. So I'm just going to scroll that up, make it a little bit more visible, and then come up here and do the wget http colon slash slash google app engine dot google code dot com slash files slash google app engine underscore one dot eight dot eight dot zip oops did I type it wrong google app engine dot google code dot com slash files not slash file sorry about that and that's going to download and install and then the next thing is just to unzip it google app engine underscore one dot eight dot eight dot zip and off it goes. Okay, so once that's done, the next thing to do is, uh, as we can see here, we can uh, install MySQL Server. So if I just 
I'll just say this so we can see it. I'll say sudo apt get install mysql dash server dash five dot five and off it goes. Okay, so once that's done, um, we're going to step through the uh, MySQL Server installation. So one, the first thing that it asks you is to set the root user's password. So I'm just going to create a password here and say OK to that. And then repeat that password. And then MySQL will go ahead and install. Okay, so once MySQL is done, uh, we can start take a look at what's going on next. So it's once we're done installing MySQL, we can continue on to the Hello World tutorial. So uh, we should be good to go. So let's give it a shot. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a directory called Hello World. I can do it within my home folder. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Hello World. And then within this, we're going to create the sample script called Hello World.php. So I'm going to say create a new document. I don't have any templates installed. So on Linux, you've got the text editor, gedit, run that. And within that, I'm just going to say php echo hello world. Now, you don't have to close your PHP tag like this, but I find it's a lot neater if you do just in the in the beginning for your initial apps. So I'm just going to save that out. I'm going to put it into the folder that we had created. Hello.php. Save it out. Let's take a look at my folder. We can see hello.php is there. Now the next thing I need is a configuration file called app.yaml. So I can, what I'm just going to do just to keep it simple is to copy what was on the web page. Now notice that the script is hello world.php, but the one I created I called something else. I called it hello.php. So if you are going to cut and paste, just make sure that you match this to the actual script name that you had created. So in my case, hello.php, I should map the script tag in here with that. Now the YAML file is metadata that describes your application to App Engine. So I have my application name called hello world. I'll also just call that hello just to keep it simple. Um, the version of your app, you can rev that version as you upload it to the cloud. When you're keeping it locally, it doesn't matter. The runtime is PHP, and the API version is the app engine version of PHP that you're using. So while PHP is 5.x, it's the first release of PHP for app engine that we'll be using. So I just say version 1 in there. So I'm going to save this in the same directory, and I'm going to call it app.yaml. Okay, so let's test this. So to test this, I run the local app server's Python file. It's devappserver.py, and then I give it the path to the Hello World directory. So one thing I like to do after I've done all the previous steps is just to make sure I have a clean system. So I've just rebooted, and I'm going to launch Terminal again. Oops, I did a few of them. And within that terminal, I am going to find where my PHP CGI directory is. And I do that with sudo find slash dash name PHP dash CGI, like so. Sudo needs a password, so I type in my admin password and I wait for a moment. And we can see that I have a couple of directories where it was installed. And installed there, if you recognize, was the one that I had done earlier on. And so I'm going to use that one because that's where I'd installed PHP myself. So the next thing I want to do is to launch the app server itself, and that uses a Python script at Google underscore app engine slash dev underscore app server dot pi. I need to specify the PHP executable path, which is the one from above. So PHP underscore executable. I always misspell that word path equals slash home slash l moroni slash php dash five dot four dot fifteen slash install there slash bin slash php dash cgi and then the folder where i kept my where i created my php earlier on which was just hello world so if i do that now app engine sdk launcher will launch and we can see that the admin server is running at 8,000, and the actual server itself will be running at 8080. Those were the default values. If I open Firefox, 
and I say localhost 8080, there's my hello world actually running. So I now have my development system up and running within Linux. And if I want to look at my admin console, I can see it at localhost 8000 right here. So this is it. This is just the, ba the basics of getting started with setting up a local App Engine instance. So you can build App Engine stuff using the PHP SDK. You can build them locally, and in future videos, we'll see how you deploy them to the cloud.